Oh, it was a great session dedicated to the rule of immunotherapy in gynecological malignancies, and I was uh, so proud to speak about the novelties in endometrial cancer. For several years, we consider endometrial cancer quite a benign tumor, very easy to manage, very easy to treat. This was related uh, to the to the early diagnosis, because in most part of cases, more than 80% of patients, the diagnosis is um, performed at stage one, two, when the tumor is uterine confined. And uh, this give us the impression that this was a very easy to treat tumor. But unfortunately, actually endometrial cancer represented the only gynecological uh, malignancies with uh, incidents and mortalities which are increasing. Um, and uh, for several years, uh, we have only carboplatin paclitaxel in the first line metastatic uh, advanced uh, setting. And after the failure of carboplatin paclitaxel, whichever drug we use, the response rate is around the 30, 10% and the median overall survival around the 30 months. Um, the, the TGCA project clearly reported that endometrial cancer is not a single disease, but at least four different tumors. And one of these tumors uh, is linked to microsatellite instability, uh, which represent genomic instability, which increases the tumor infiltrated lymphocytes. And this is the reason why these tumors uh, clearly respond very well to immunotherapy. Um, this tumor represents 30% of endometrial cancer. So one out of three endometrial cancer tumor have this characteristic. And when we use immunotherapy as a single agent in this tumor, we obtain responses up to 57%. And these are very long duration of responses with 84% of patients still in response two years after starting treatment. So a, a revolution, I have to say, in the treatment of disease. But we discover also that when we combine immunotherapy plus a TKI inhibitor with the an antiangiogenic profile like uh, lembatinib, for instance, we can broaden the indication of immunotherapy and we can have responses also in patients without MSI high tumor. This was the effort of the K-0-775 trial, which was a randomized trial comparing the combination of pembrolizumab plus lembatinib versus physician choice chemotherapy between weekly paclitaxel or anthracycline in advanced or recurrent endometrial cancer who patient who have failed at least one, but no more than two prior platinum-based chemotherapy line. And the trial reported a significant benefit for the experimental combination in terms of progression-free and overall survival, which was uh, in my memory, this is the first time in last 20 years that we have a combo which increase overall survival. And uh, for sure, we need to manage the toxicity profile of this combo, particularly the TKI inhibitor may have some uh, issue in terms of toxicity, in terms of hypertension, uh, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, body, uh, body weight loss, uh, but we can manage. We have to perform our learning curve in managing this toxicity because we cannot deny our patient the possibility to receive a combo which increase overall survival. And uh, in the last two days, the, the, um, the clinical research in endometrial cancer is moving forward. And two days ago, the press release announced the positive results of the first trial, the RUBY trial, combining immunotherapy plus chemotherapy, carboplatin, paclitaxel, bone chemotherapy in the first line advanced setting. The results were announced as positive in terms of progression-free 
uh, survival, which was the primary point of the study, both in the MMR proficient, but also in the MMR deficient population. I cannot say the granularity of the results because the readout has not been uh, uh, already reported, but the press release announced the trial as positive. That's suggesting that uh, the standard of care may change again and again. And the, last, the next few years will be very interesting under this point of view.